shoot you. Careful now. We had been staying in the Monadnock region of southern New Hampshire for a few days, and when we packed up to move to a new region, Allie spotted a mayfly on my guitar, which on the last day of our trip, I would use an imitation of to catch the biggest trout I've caught in a while. way to the Sunapee region, we came across a bank of flowers that we had discovered this time last year on a different trip, but we had no idea we'd be driving past it this day. And it's these little roadside finds that make trips like this unforgettable. While we were stopped, I figured I'd throw a line, and I ended up with a little native brook trout. few more sporadic stops, as New Hampshire is full of old New England history, like this old railroad line we came across. This light is really pretty cool. This is nuts. There's a bottle of wine on the table. This is so cool, it's on this little... <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is nuts. Cabs what? Look at this. This is actually really cool. I didn't get the gist of it at all off the, online. Wow, the whole ceiling is the same coffee bag things that yeah. I have. Wait, this is the bedroom? It's one of them, the big one. What's right can you turn it? Do you see what this is right here? What? There's a tree. Oh, coming up the middle? Wow. With the sink. The window to the tree. <laughs> I knew this place was going to be cool. I saw the pictures on Airbnb. But this is, seeing it in person is... This is unreal. I've been to a lot of really cool Airbnbs, a lot of tree houses, and this place 
just has a feeling to it. I really dig it. It's really well done. I think we're pretty close to the lake right here in the state park, Sunapee State Park. If you're interested in renting this place, I'll put the link below in the video description. It's been really rainy and cold this whole trip. And right now we're gifted with some sunshine. Definitely want to take some time to enjoy this while it's here because just having the sun on your face after a long stretch of cold days is feels so good. I'll show you tons of gems and places to go throughout this video. And if you're interested in planning your own trip to the Sunapee region, just hit the link in the top line of the video description for tons more info and inspiration. After we watched the rain from the porch, we headed to a nearby spot with great reviews. And while we were eating, the sun broke out again. And we woke the next morning with plans to explore the whole region. There was some sunshine in the early morning, but it seemed imminent that the rain would return. So we drove past endless wildflowers and got breakfast in the town of New London. Well, it's raining pretty good today. Haven't had great luck with the weather on this trip. We're driving the Sunapee Loop. I don't know if it's the scenic byway or the loop. I don't know if they're different or what, but there's a lot of great roads all around the Sunapee region that lead through really cool little towns. Apparently one of the most picturesque town greens is in a town called Washington, so we're on our way there. The important thing to remember is that you can't control the weather, and these type of things can happen when you take trips, and you gotta make the most of it. Going on a scenic drive on a rainy day is actually really cozy. We've got an old Bee Gees tape playing. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that there's hope that the sun might come back out. I can see blue right there, just barely. Yeah. <laughs> over 
for anything that caught our eye, including this antique shop where Allie got some great books <laughs> and I got a metal ladle to help fill the buckets for our cabin sink. lifelong family heirloom from the local pewter worker, and we continued along the byway as the sun poked in and out between the clouds. After a farm stand stop, we came across the stone bridge with a honey hole beneath it. And they're feeding, that's the other thing. I gotta tie the right fly. And though my first cast didn't land quite right, you have to be careful in slow moving water like this, as the fish have a lot of time to study the surface. And if you start making a lot of commotion and doing recasts, you'll spook them fast. You need a good natural looking drift to fool a big fish in water like this. That was a good fish, but I didn't quite set it. And so I kept casting as the rain began to fall and big dark mayflies flew all around me while the fish rose to eat them on both sides of the bridge. The water felt good on my legs and the rain was refreshing. But no matter how perfectly I drifted over the fish, I couldn't get another one to bite. Maybe it does get fish to get I mean, there's four or five but good... Good trails. As we continued on, we came across a surprise lupine patch that glowed gold in the afternoon light, while raindrops still fell.
and so we headed back to the treehouse before dark with plans to enjoy the grounds before a dinner that we've been waiting for all trip. And on our final day, we planned to do a little more adventuring around the area, but I was dead set on making my way back to that bridge for one more try at the big trout. It seemed like around every corner there was a state park or an overlook or a pond or a back road to get lost on. Wow. By the time we had to leave, the Sunapi region had earned a place in our hearts. And on my first cast upon returning to the bridge, I hooked one of the trout. <laughs> I 
was over the moon and would never forget the treehouse on Tiffany Hill and the big trout under the stone bridge. Mm-hmm.